Okay, hello everyone. Today I'll discuss about partial passive ownership holding and licensing. So the authors of this paper are Leonardos Petrakis, Skartados, and Stamatopoulos. They published in this this paper in Economics Letter in two thousand twenty one. So these are the outlines of this paper. In the first section is introduction, model, equilibrium analysis. So this equilibrium analysis are is divided into four sections. The first one is no technology licensing. Uh, and then technology licensing, and licensing incentive welfare implication. In the first section of section three, means firm one, because later uh, we have two firms. I will discuss further about this firm one and firm two. Firm one has technology, and firm two doesn't have technology. So later C one equals to C minus epsilon, sorry E, and for the marginal cost of firm two is C equals to C, or C two equals to C. So in section three point one means firm one doesn't license its technology to firm two, and in section three point two. Firm one license its technology to firm two, so therefore in section three point two, C two becomes C minus epsilon because firm one license its technology, so the technology the marginal cost of firm one and firm two will be equals to the marginal cost of firm two. So later we will discuss this, and then section three is about licensing incentive. Whether firm one has incentive to license its technology to firm two, and we have for implication the last one conclusion. So this is the introduction. Pass partial passive ownership holding, or denote as PPO. A situation in which a firm owns a non-controlling minority. Non-controlling minority means the Let's say, let define the firm. The firm who owns the rifle. Let's say, acquiring firm. Firm, and the firm who is owned by the rifle called acquired firm. So in this case. The acquiring firm doesn't have the control right to determine the acquired firm decision. So in this case, because the acquired firm decision is to determine Q two later, so firm one as acquiring firm doesn't have the control right to determine firm two quantity Q two. Okay, so. Here have raised antitrust concern due to their well documented anti competitive effect. Means that anti competitive means that a uh, PPO reduce restrict or reduced competition. So. We can see, like in Azar et al. two thousand eighteen, El Hound two thousand twenty. However, recent literature points out that PPO may also have beneficial effect on the market outcomes and welfare. So these uh, results are discussed in Moyana and Lopez two thousand eighteen, Papadopoulos two thousand nineteen. So a central issue in this debate concerns the impact of. PPO or patent licensing and technology transfer. You can see like Lopez and Vivis, two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty. 
In general, if a firm owns a cost-reducing technology which is contractible, then it can license its technology to the rival. However, if the technology is non-contractible, then the low-cost firm can induce technology transfer by acquiring part of the rival firm. So these two ways are often seen in Ghost and Morita 2017. So this paper, by introducing a fixed fee licensing in an otherwise standard homogeneous product called not duopoly, we saw that these uh, two channels of the technology transfer can be complements. Means that uh, later in the last section, we will see that technology and PPO are actually complement. Means that increase in uh, a little bit in PPO will occur the licensing or increase the licensing. Also, so that PPO can promote licensing via fixed fee and thus contrary to common perception can lead to higher consumer surplus and social welfare. So this paper does highlights a novel pro-competitive effect of uh, PPO because later we can see that since PPO and licensing is complement, therefore can increase social welfare and consumer surplus. So this paper highlight the novel of pro-competitive of the PPO. So in Cost and Morita 2017, is actually this paper is the closest paper to, uh, to this work. So they also consider firm choose to transfer the technology either PPO or via licensing under royalty. So the difference between this paper and Morita 2017 is they have the royalties but here we have uh, the authors have the fixed fee so they highlight the substitutability so if in this paper is complements then in Gross and Morita's paper is substitutability between alternative method of technology transfer so uh, the author established cases of complementary between PPO and technology licensing via fixed fee they also consider fixed fee because uh, they discuss below there are situations in which royalty are hardly applicable or may not be preferable. So this is the reason they use the fixed fee. There is substantial empirical evidence that fixed fee are common in many real world markets. So they can find in Mendy 2009, 2005 and so on. They are also common in technology licensing in the university startups and spin off like Aksoy and Beaudry 2021 and so on. So let's go now to this to the next section, the model. So the model, there are two firms, firm one and firm two. So firm one is the firm which has the technology. So firm one marginal cost is C equals to C minus E, or you can say C1 equals to C minus E, where E element from 0 to C. And from 2 marginal costs, you can also use this as C2 equals to C. Okay, so from 1 has PPO on from 2, we denote as K element from 0 to 1 over 2. So this is the inverse demand alpha minus q1 minus q2. So the game setting of this paper in the first stage from 1 decide whether to license its, its superior technology to from 2 via fixed fee where f greater than 0. In the second stage firms compete in quantity. So actually we solve the game backward induction. Backward induction means we solve the game from the second stage. Here are the net profit. Here the profit of firm 1. We see that firm 1 
profit is the operational profit, this term, plus the fixed fee. He of firm 1 gains fixed fee from firm 2. So this is the operational profit of firm 2. Okay. Uh, we have this one because he has ownership in firm 2. So firm 1 get K times operational profit. But for firm 2, we have K1 minus K. So minus K times operational profit is the share he gave or firm 2 gave to firm 1. Okay. So we have C2 equals to C. F equals to 0 under no licensing. C2 equals to C minus E. And F larger than 0 under licensing. So to guarantee that firm 2 is active in the market under no licensing. Because we know that under no licensing, firm 2 has higher marginal cost so we need to guarantee that firm 2 is active in the market or is exist in the market under no licensing so we assume that e equals to epsilon equals to e over alpha tilde lower than one where alpha tilde is the proxy of the market size and epsilon element from zero to one measure how effective the technology in reducing the marginal cost. Now we continue to section 3, equilibrium analysis. In the section 3, 1, no technology licensing. So our setting here is C2 equals to C because here we firm 1 doesn't license its technology to firm 2. And he or firm 2 doesn't need to pay the fixed cost. Okay, so we substitute this into equation 1. The firm's maximize its profit with respect to quantity. So we can find the reaction function in equation 2. How do we solve this? The first order condition of the profit from 1 with respect to Q1. And equals to zero so we can find this equation and for the second equation is take the first or the condition of pi 2 with respect to q2 equals to zero then we can find equation the second equation so we can see from here that for the first equation r1n we can we can see here a minus sign means that increase in k increase in partial passive ownership will reduce the r1n right because we have minus sign here okay so reduce here we can see here q1 right will reduce q1 will increase r2n Okay, so we can see that we can also um, make like this way, increase in PPO will decrease R1N. Firm 1 let Firm 2 to produce more because Firm 1 has ownership in Firm 2. So Firm 1 will gain from the profit sharing K times operational profit of firm 2. So we solve equation 2 and equation 1, we obtain equilibrium quantity. So we must make sure that Q2 is positive, so epsilon lower than 1. So our Q2N will be positive.
okay so next uh, we substitute q1n and q2n into the profit function then we can find the net profit of firm 1 and firm 2 in equation 3 okay so we can see from here that epsilon since we know that firm 1 has the technology licensing technology right higher technology or superior technology so epsilon is actually increase his profit but for firm 2 decrease firm 2's profit firm 1's profit as well as industry profit so this one is industry profit of the or the total profit of firm 1 and firm 2 increase with k but only if the technology is not too effective but firms 2 profit always decrease with k so as a result consumer surplus and social welfare decrease with k as well next uh, section 3.2 technology licensing under licensing firm 1 license is technology to firm 2 so from 2 marginal cost become c2 equals to c minus e, minus e because our te the technology is the cost reduction technology the technology reduce the marginal cost so we substitute this into equation one then we can find the reaction function under licensing in both equation r1l and r2l so we can see from here that actually for firm one the reaction function are the same as under no licensing because the licensing itself doesn't affect uh, firm one marginal cost so it's the same as the previous case but for firm two now uh from two marginal cost decreases as firm two get the license technology licensing so we have the this one the sec uh the epsilon here so these are the different between r to n and r to l here we have plus epsilon and under no licensing we don't have epsilon so we may conclude that r to l is greater than r to n technology licensing shift firms to reaction function outward but for firm one r to r1 l equals to r1 n technology licensing has no effect on firms one reaction function so we solve the system of four so we get equilibrium in equation five okay so due to production shifting firms one output increases with k but firms one output decreases with k moreover aggregate output aggregate output means q1 uh, sorry q capital q l equals to q1 l plus q2 l so we can find here the aggregate output under licensing decreases with k so when we take the first derivative is in decreases in k because ppo is competition because ppo actually decreased the competition so we substitute equation 5 into 1 we get firm's profit function so function of f so we can see in the footnote 6 the profit of firm 1 under licensing is here and the profit of firm 2 under licensing is here okay so now we want to see the how much is the fixed 
cost for the licensing, right? So in our mind that firm two will only wants to pay for the licensing fee if firms to profit under licensing greater or equals to firms to profit under no licensing so we can define the fixed cost is pi to l minus pi to n okay so we can find the fixed cost here okay uh but before we go there since uh the first derivative of pi 1 l over pa partial f equals to 1 minus k greater than 0 greater than 0 because our k is from 0 to 0.5 right so firm 1 sets the highest fee in stage 1 such that firm 2 agrees to become a licensee so we can find this so as expected f l increases with epsilon but it also increases with k because firm 2 profit decrease faster with k under no licensing than under licensing The firm's equilibrium profit under licensing are so we substitute this FL into the profit in footnote 6. Therefore, we can find equation 6. Okay, so here from equation 6, we can find the total profit capital pi L equals to pi 1 L plus pi 2 L always increase in k okay as we see that pi to l equals to pi to n they always decrease in k so we can see the profit of firm 2 under licensing actually is equals to the profit of firm 2 under no licensing so they have no difference so as under no licensing because we mentioned before the under no licensing consumer surplus social welfare decrease in k right and here also we can see that consumer surplus and social welfare decrease with k okay so next we continue to section 3 licensing incentive by comparing the equilibrium market outcome across non-licensing and the licensing regime we can get the following result so we can find lemma one that q1 under licensing is lower than q1 no licensing because here under licensing firm 2 has technology and he he led firm 2 to produce more therefore uh Q1L is lower under licensing. So that is why we can see that Q2 licensing is greater than Q2N. And then as a result, we can find that the total Q under licensing is greater than no licensing. But for the final price, it's lower under licensing uh, compared to under no licensing. So we can see that Licensing allows firm 2, so these are the reason to produce higher output because it lowers its marginal cost. The licensing lowers marginal cost of firm 2 and the second one, firm 1 further shift production towards its partial owned rival. Licensing intensifies competition and leads to higher aggregate output and lower market price. So in stage 1, Licensing occurs only if it's profitable for firm 1. Example, pi 1 L higher or equals to pi 1 N. Okay. So we can find proposition 1 
identifies the condition under which licensing occurs. So proposition one or point one says that for epsilon lower than two over three, firm one always license is technology. So we can find this condition from the profit difference of firm one licensing and from one licensing so we can find from here so this is the proof so we can find so uh, from one licensing will greater than from one no licensing if this is the critical value kcr okay and the second point is for Epsilon lower than 9 over 10, but greater than 2 over 3. So here, under this case, from 1 license is technology to from 1 if only. So here, the there is no licensing. But uh, from this point to point 9 over 10, licensing will occur. If k, this is the vertical axis is k, if k is higher than kcr, so over here, there might happen, the licensing might happen. And for k larger than 9 over 10, k larger than 9 over 10 to this side, firm 1 never license is technology to firm 2. Okay, so this is the area of the licensing and no licensing. Okay, from proposition one, from one always license is superior technology to fir to to its partial own firm as long as the technology is not too effective. So epsilon must lower than or equals to two over three. Thus, the well-known incentive for licensing under fixed fee. We can find this in. 1998 this also hold in this case because in this paper also say that as long as the uh, technology is not too effective so there exists licensing however ppo may promote licensing even for more effective technology in particular for value epsilon 2 over 3 and 9 over 10 Firm license is superior technology to firm 2 as long as a large enough K or firm 2. So higher K go up, the, the licensing may happen here. Okay, now we continue to the welfare implication. Evaluate the impact of PPO on welfare. Proposition 2 identifies the range of the technology effectiveness, epsilon value, for which higher level of PPO may enhance consumer surplus and social welfare. So, Proposition 2.1, uh, epsilon lower than 2 over 3 and epsilon greater than 9 over 10. Okay, Consumer surplus and social welfare decrease in k for all k from 0 to 0.2 the second point of for 2 epsilon lower than 9 over 10 and or higher than 2 over 3 consumer surplus and social welfare the first increase in k if k switch from 0 to kcr to KCR 2.5 decrease in K if all other cases so consumer surplus and social welfare movement K lower than KCR to K higher than KCR so uh, figure 2 is about the welfare social welfare and KCR so we can substitute this a a here is like alpha equals to four c is the marginal cost t is the 
cost reduction and epsilon is alpha minus C KCR so we can find the KCR here so our critical KCR here 0 0.156 so it says here that uh, here the KCR the critical point of KCR lower lower than KCR there is no licensing but here to the right hand side there is a licensing so we can prove proposition 2 here the first one from pos proposition 1 we know that epsilon lower than 2 over 3 licensing always occurs so from 6 and 5 consumer surplus csl will be this one and social welfare will be this one so we can see that increase in k will lower than will lower the consumer surplus and also the social welfare okay so this is similar to if epsilon higher than 9 over 10 so from 3 consumer surplus is this one social welfare is this one where omega we can define omega as this value then increase in k lower than consumer lower the consumer surplus under no licensing and increase in k lower social welfare under no licensing so proposition 2 shows that there is a complementary relationship may exist between PPO and licensing in enhancing consumer surplus and social welfare. Means that it says that an increase a little bit of from zero point let's say here because our k here is 0 0.15693 right so we decrease a little bit here let's say here is here the k is uh 0 0.1565 okay in this case no licensing while licensing occur for k a little bit increase from here to here let's say this one is let's say this one k equals to 0 0.1575 okay so you, you can find the explanation in the paper uh, so thus if from one let's say if from one by a little bit only uh, 0.1% Okay. Consumer surplus here, consumer surplus and social welfare increase. So we have the the consumer surplus now is ju is jumped here. So it's higher and also social welfare. So proposition 2 essentially says that TPO have a positive impact on consumer surplus and social welfare whenever they induce technology licensing. So in this case, a higher K has the usual negative impact on consumer surplus and social welfare. However, when uh, epsilon is this value, technology licensing does depend on K. An increase from K lower than KCR to K la larger than KCR move the market from no licensing to the licensing regime. So therefore, this can 
re, uh, as I mentioned before here, a little bit if the firm won by a little bit the share of firm 2. Therefore, it will increase consumer surplus, industry profit, and social welfare. Okay. So, consumer surplus increases because licensing raises industry profit. So, we can see from lemma 1. Consumer surplus under licensing higher than consumer surplus under no licensing. So, not, notably, even a minor increase in the level of PPO can induce a switch from no licensing to the licensing regime. As a result, higher consumer surplus, industry profit, and social welfare. That's the meaning of this one. Even a little bit higher K can raise consumer surplus, industry profit, and social welfare from no licensing to licensing. Proposition 2 shows that complementary complementarity relationship may exist between PPO and licensing in enhancing consumer surplus and social welfare. So this are the conclusion this paper consider homogeneous good could not duopoly in which one firm own a non drastic cost reduction technology and also have partial passive ownership holding over the rifle. So results shows that PPO may provide incentive for technology licensing between the firms in the market and can raise consumer surplus and social welfare. This paper does identify a novel pro-competitive effect of PPO and establish a previously unknown complementary relationship between PPO and licensing incentive. Thank you.